if there is one place on earth which I would like to call a home, this is it. We're here today because in this area, Sveaskog has more of an experimental area with continuous cover forestry close to the national park in Tiveda. And of course it's about the nature restoration law. It sets legally binding targets on different ecosystems like forests, freshwater ecosystems, marine ecosystems. We had voluntary restoration commitments many times but they were not implemented and that's why it's important to have them legally binding. Clear cutting as a method is used about of 97% of productive forests. If you clear cut an area and do not leave sufficient retention, you can have negative impact on the soil, you can have negative impact on the water, and you can lose uh, species that might never return to this forest. I do the clear felling in my own forest. So then I started shifting, thinking, searching for something different. Classical forestry is about growing trees, farming trees. But we will like to change that and see the forest as a complex and adaptive system in itself. This forest I did inherit it 50 years ago. And I walked in it as a child before that. I know this place. You have to look at the forest as a system that has developed over millions of years. It's a kind of immune system within the forest. So our goal is not to farm the trees the industry wants at the moment. Our goal is to try to minimize the difference between the unmanaged forest and the managed forest. I'm having equally good economy as if I've done clear felling. And I don't dare to say, but I think actually I will make a little better off. Because I don't do any planting, no thinning. I go for these big trees and the forest is just producing it by itself. You could have sort of a microcentric view as well and thinking of the fungi, how they react and how they behave. So biodiversity is not something uh, consideration I have to do to be nice to uh, the nature. Biodiversity is the tool, the insurance for me to have a healthy forest. For us, the forest is of course our home, but it's our source of income. I've been a nature tourism entrepreneur since my 20s and we do well here. I mean, of the 300 people here, 50 live from taking other people out in the forest, not cutting it down. And we can also show different kinds of forestry and how the forestry can work together with a lot of other things. So it's not either, but it can be both. And having children and grandchildren and knowing about the climate change that is catching up on us more and more and you have to start thinking will my children have a future here? This is what I can do to start supporting catching up with rich biodiversity. If you have to sh change the way of you think and how you relate to everything around you. The law is important, we must have it because we don't get it from Sweden. We need support from you guys in Europe to push our government. It's important. So if I can provide the opportunity for people to come and visit nature where they are willing to leave a little bit of their heart <laughs> and, uh, and come a little bit closer to their soul, then that is what I want to do with my life. You love the forest. I do. <laughs> I love the forest and and uh, it brings uh, so much purpose. <laughs> <laughs>